Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Thanks for scheduling today's hearing. <clears throat> and thank you, Secretary Sebelius, for being here today. It's been nearly six months since you last appeared before the committee. Given all that has gone on during that time, particularly with the implementation of Obamacare, I'd like to say that today's appearance is long past due. When uh, you were here back in April, you assured us that the implementation was on track, that it was all going smoothly, and that the exchanges would be ready to go by October 1st. Now it appears that your statements from the previous hearings were at best misinformed. From where I sit, things do not seem to be going smoothly at all. In fact, I think we would all agree that thus far the implementation of the so-called Affordable Care Act has been an absolute debacle. You admitted as much last week when you testified before the House Energy and Commerce Committee when you said, quote, hold me accountable for the debacle. I'm responsible, unquote. Madam Secretary, while I'm glad that you are accepting responsibility for this disastrous rollout, I would have preferred that you and the rest of the administration were honest with us to begin with. Perhaps in April, you really did believe that things were on track, but you had, you had to have several indications before October 1st that there were problems with the website and with the exchanges. It is simply inexcusable that the members of this committee were not told earlier that these problems were occurring. And it, and it wasn't for one of asking. I personally sent you a number of letters asking for details on the information or in, and implementation of the health care law, many of which were ignored entirely. This cavalier attitude toward a Senate committee with oversight jurisdiction over your agency is, to put it simply uh, uh, appalling and needs to be rectified. If the past month has been any indication, there are likely to be numerous additional problems ahead. That being the case, I think it's only proper that you provide this committee with more regular updates on the issues with which you are dealing. In fact, I would ask that you come here once a month for the next six months to provide this committee with status updates on the implementation of Obamacare, and I hope you will agree to do so. Like I said, Madam Secretary, it's clear that the problems you've encountered thus far were not unforeseen. Two separate reports, one from the Government Accountability Office in June and another from the Department of Health and Human Services Office of Inspector General in August, identified significant implementation challenges months ahead of the October 1st uh, deadline. Yet there is no indication that the warnings from these two independent nonpartisan government watchdogs were heeded by the administration or that any thought was given to delaying the startup date as a result. When you were here in April 1st, I raised concerns about whether adequate testing was occurring to, ens to ensure that privacy controls were in place for the exchanges. In fact, I specifically asked you about having an independent entity review the entire system before it went live to ensure that all appropriate privacy and security controls were in place. You assured me that all testing protocols were being followed and that privacy issues were a high priority. However, we now know that no end-to-end -end testing of the system occurred before the system went live. None. In fact, key CMS officials knew on September 27th that there was a high security risk to the system if it went up as planned. My colleagues and I have sent several letters since the spring asking for more information on what privacy controls are being instituted as part of the exchange infrastructure and asking for details about whether or not testing was being done to address the privacy and security concerns we have raised. To date, we have not received any answers to those questions. So not only can millions of Americans not log into the website successfully, but those who have actually succeeded could now find themselves at the mercy of identity thieves uh, across the globe. I would call this a less than ideal situation for all of our constituents. That brings us to another set of issues that I hope you'll be able to shed some light on today. Let me start with a simple present and premise. Words matter. We have all heard the golden saying, honesty is the best policy. Unfortunately, this age-old wisdom doesn't seem to apply to the Obamacare pledges. More and more promises made at this time, or made at the time this law was passed, are now crumbling under the weight of reality on a daily basis. 
Let's start with the famous pledge that health reform would reduce costs by $2,500 for the average family. The truth is, with all the new mandates going into effect, the cost of health insurance in this country is projected to rise at a remarkable rate. Some studies, including one from the Manhattan Institute, estimate that individual market premiums will increase by as much as 99% for males, for men, and 62% for women nationwide. Then, of course, there was President Obama's promise when the law was passed that, quote, if you like your health care plan, you can keep it, unquote, and that, quote, if you like your doctor, you will be able to keep your doctor, unquote. This, to put it bluntly, is simply untrue. And that's why the Washington Post gave him four Pinocchios. In fact, the Washington Post, this was on October 30th, gave it four Pinocchios, which represents the highest level of untruthfulness. You really have to try to get four, you really have to try hard to get four Pinocchios. You don't simply get it from making a misstatement. Yet it wasn't until the last few weeks that people in the administration and the White House started trying to rewrite what the president said. And let's be candid. It wasn't a newfound on a streak that changed the administration's tone. It was the fact that Americans started receiving cancellation notices from their insurers. According to the Associated Press, 3.5 million people have received such notices thus far, and the same fate is certain to befall millions more before all is said and done. Put simply, there is a long track record of broken promises and untruthful answers to both this committee and the American people with respect to how this law should work or would work and the impact it would have. Now, I hope that that will stop today. No more caveats, no more excuses, no more spin, just give us the truth. Answers like we don't know and we were wrong are perfectly acceptable, as long as that is the truth. I want to thank you again, uh, Mr. Chairman, for holding this hearing. As you can see, we have a lot to discuss, and I want to thank you, Madam Secretary, for being here. I know it's uh, not the most pleasant thing you can do, but the fact of the matter is these are real legitimate questions that really have to be answered by you and others who are in charge of these, these programs, and I haven't even gone into I expect you're going to be able to, to get this, uh, the IT problem solved, the information technology problem solved. Uh, that, that doesn't even begin to answer the questions about why small businesses won't, are now employing people for 30 hours or less or why they won't employ more than 49 people because they get triggered a huge, huge expense under this, I think, very uh, poor bill that wasn't well thought out to begin with. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.